What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Right, so I am getting to the point where I want to start ripping out the world, eating the world as you call it, and getting all of them resources in before I start running it out. Once I've got some sort of symmetry to the base as well, I will of course... I don't know, uh, be able to leave the planet. At the minute, with it being such a mess, my not OCD is kind of causing me to um, figure this out first. Now, the Atmos suits are working nicely to get out the base, but what I want to do is rip that out, as you can see, just disconnect that, and I'm going to install, I don't know, 10 or 12 more. We need a lot more. A lot more Atmo suits. I want everybody to be going out there. At the minute, the quick fix is to turn it off like so. And everybody rushes out without an Atmo suit and gets stuff done. Now, I will do that, and I do do that on occasions of emergencies or if I just need something to get done. The Atmo suits obviously are healthy and keep the uh, duplicates safe and able to work for a lot longer with a lot more oxygen, but also in a lot more harsh conditions, whether that be cold or hot. So just switching a few of these over, chucking down the extra, there you go, the extra buildings and just wiring them in. The infrastructure's already there, though they're 120 power each, so we're going to need some new fandangled power cable. With them set up, basically, I just need to turn the, the machine that makes them, the Atmo suit builder, and tell it to build a few more. Now I'm not building the exact amount I need. I'm just building an extra 12 I think it is. Obviously remember to always set on that Atmo suit uh, builder to always repair worn out Atmo suits. When they get worn out they're obviously trash unless you rebuild them. You could have two machines, one for building, one for repairing. But honestly it's really not that complex or doesn't take much time at all got to have a bit of bit of a mess there due to I'm not sure actually because the toilets are not backed up I haven't got more people than I have toilets so I'm not sure what the issue is there FYI uh, I found this out a lot later on when I was trying to put some more bathrooms in if you put bathrooms out where they're in their Atmos suits they can use them they don't need to take off their Atmos suits what I had was people going out, the duplicates were going all the way out to the other side of the map in their Atmos suit to do whatever it was they were doing. Then it would trigger to say that they could go to the toilet if they wanted to and they was having to run all the way back to the base, inside the base, take off that Atmos suit, go to the toilet to get back out again and of course there wasn't enough time for that. But if you put toilets, satellite toilets out and about, they will use those and it should help them uh, relieve themselves. Obviously if they relieve themselves out of the base it's not the end of the world and of course in an in, a, in an atmos suit it will store it anyway or they will still be in it so they'll still have the negative buff but it won't be all over the base floor until they take the atmos suit off creating some extra jiggers now now at some point i do need to do a synopsis of who or what i've got and how or where they need to be at any time i've concentrated a lot on the ranchers uh, and I really could, I mean, we've got two doctors, right? One or two doctors, so that's fine. Um, but we could really do with some more people storing because there's still a lot of mess on the floor. Research, just one is fine. And we also need to be careful or need to keep up with the actual farms. So the farms that are in the Dreco pens, um, they require obviously maintaining with fertilizer especially the millwoods for the drecos which requires dirt and that's done by farmers not by ranchers nice big open space there to the left of those water tanks and of course that's going to be either more water tanks but also there's going to be a huge area there to the left which will be for the Volcanoes, slushes, uh, whatever they are, they will all be in a huge room there, hopefully, with the liquid being collected at the bottom, and then I can process that again using the endostatic generators to take the heat out. 
the gold volcanoes you can see there and any other metal volcanoes that we have. I'm not sure if there is many more, but if there is, they'll also be confined into a room on their own. And I'm hoping that when they erupt, they'll release the molten liquid, which is about 1300, the gold is an example. It's about 1300 degrees. That will go through some mesh tiles, which will be made of steel to support them. They shouldn't get that hot that quick. There will be a crap ton of the generators and then behind them will be the diamond plates which are so far for me anyway by far the best they're also fantastic because they are diamond their melting point is 4000 degrees nothing gets that hot uh, well I've not seen anything that hot anyway so they will be able to sit in the liquid and not be damaged and also help transfer that heat up to your what are they called? Yeah, your uh, generators. And really rip that heat out. Now, I know this does work. Uh, we do have some groundbreaking ones coming up in a couple of other episodes. Two things, really. One is that we can convert the molten metals instantly um, and quite easily using this process that I'm trying. And it does work very well, so make sure you subscribe to see that. But also, I found a little bit of a cheeky way uh, of doing the ranchers and making the Drecos with the massive ranchers where you've got a lot of the actual critters um, to really cheese the game because of course the maximum room size is 96 but if you put two rooms next to each other and then make a special pathway that doesn't stop them from counting the critters can use both rooms and obviously the other room, the second room, you just fill with crops you don't need all of the shearing and all that crap in there because of course that's done in the other but yeah double rooms coming up and uh, instant molten metal to solid metal so subscribe for that jumping over to the second asteroid uh, I did kind of forget a little bit and they are starving that is my fault so it's a quite an easy fix we already have the teleporters we already have the setup i just haven't wired them in so immediately what i'm going to do here is wire in this and then we can chuck any old food we have is that 1.9 million calories or 1.9 million kilocalories to be more precise uh, so that's like 1.9 billion calories but anyway so just something that we're not going to use on this this asteroid is used in the fried mushroom so pretty much anything else we can dump over to that asteroid to keep them alive he says maybe I should have done this sooner he says so still rushing this as best I can the switch is just to manually override it the switches are actually really good and there we go we actually did lose somebody so from my comments earlier, you probably got that, but yes, the one of the uh, duplicates have starved to death, and it is in fact the one that we got free when we arrived, the one that we defrosted, not our duplicate that we sent over. So that's a silver lining, but it's still a free duplicate that we've wasted, and it was all my fault. Stupidity on the part that I forgot about them, and I shouldn't have. Especially when there's easy automations to set up to make sure it doesn't happen again. Back to this though, obviously we can send some food over for the other guys still and then we can probably get him back because there's a few projects I want to do in this home asteroid before I go over there. Um, I have a few of the items back in terms of food for the poke shells so as long as they're being fed I'm happy for now. Again that switch um, is just to turn it all off and you switch that. You don't need a duplicate to do it. You don't need to set it on level 10 or 9 or wait for somebody to go there. You switch it and it's instant so that's a really good way of managing or micromanaging things with automations because you have the power, you have the control and it's instant. There it is. You can see the switch. You literally click it and there you go. It's turned it off and then you click it and it turns it on and that's it. You don't need a duplicate to get involved there. It is a switch for yourself. So now we have plenty of food. What we've got over here, five, just shy of 500,000 calories. That should be enough, to be honest. It will probably rot. Uh, there isn't a fridge, but there isn't any power here either. So I'm not going to waste my time with that 
fridge or freezer. I have found out that you can do dry goods as well, so dry foods, but you have to rehydrate them, so that's not that exciting. Uh, but it is an option that I've never seen or done before. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that sort of thing. Else, I'm just going to go for the basic, similar to last season where we have like the meals, mixing a couple of these fancy items together. Bristle berries, I will need to start growing soon, obviously on the home asteroid. For now though, here I just want to put a bit of scaffolding down then say to dig it and just leave him alone to dig it for a bit and see how he gets on now i know he's got food he's safe and we'll just come back and see if you can dig out a lot of this and get the resources it makes it very easy then to uh, just ask him to t chuck it in the teleport and bring it back or even a better option would be to get a sweeper built the sweeper then will pick everything up and send it home for me and i don't need anybody there as yet, we don't have any of the, what are they called? There's, oh, the zombie spores to make the fancy robots I want to use to go to other planets. I'm hoping to send robots only to other planets. I'm not sure if that's feasible. Uh, obviously, the rovers is definitely not feasible because they can't really do much of anything. But whether the robot things that you build from the spores and steel are any good at that sort of thing, we'll have to wait and see i've never used them before again so that's another thing we're going to look at and figure out the best way to do that coming up just been messing around with this again i've actually turned off the incubation room from cooling and set it so that it just calls the farms in the dracos so that they'll grow again because it's still too warm obviously because i warmed it up it is coming down nicely though so it shouldn't take more than probably two or three cycles and we'll have some crops again. The mealwood lice, I think they're called, the, the grubs that come off them. The reason they don't work, by the way, is because I'm an idiot and didn't really pay much attention. It's the wood from the plant they eat, not the actual fruit. So you are best to, if the fruit gets to the point where it does flourish, you can harvest it. Uh, but what I like to do is just turn them all on, do not harvest, and let them let them be they, they seem to manage okay uh, but once you get to 10 or more that's where there's a problem with the amount you can grow because no matter how you look at the setup of these rooms the top floor is really a bit crap for growing one because there's not much space because you need the buildings um, to share them etc but two because the hydrogen is there and the crops don't grow in hydrogen so the only way to fix that is by forcing in the gas that's at the bottom which is carbon dioxide and put a lot more in so instead of having 1500 to 2000 grams per tile push it up to four four and a half even five thousand grams per tile so five kilos per tile yes it would burst eardrums of duplicates but of course it won't because they're in atmosphere suits and that pressure will push the hydrogen right to the top so you should have just a single bead of hydrogen at the very top, which means that the second floor then is growable. Jumping forward a few cycles, and you can see I have moved over the geysers to the block that I said. It's not complete yet. It's going to be probably bigger than that, quite a bit bigger, in fact. It depends on how many geysers. You can see there's one there over right on the right-hand side as well that I need to get. I could put them in their individuals and do it that way, but to be honest, a filter and a couple of pumps is just as easy. The giant gap in the middle here is for, I'm going to say farms, critter farms, ranches, or farms, ranches or farms. It's going to be one or the other. Um, on this top section here, level with the top of the, the, the or almost level with the top of the base anyway, it will be when I put the roof on these. This is where we're going to start ripping out our clean waters. So any all polluted water that we get, we'll send through the sieve system and put straight back into our base as clean water. I'm not growing anything like I normally am where you need polluted water, uh, yet anyway. I think Bristle Blossoms does use it though, so at that point I will. But there's plenty. There's plenty of water on this map. Um, and I'm pretty sure Bristle, you can use the clean water as well. The reed fibre is the one where you have to use polluted water. But I haven't required any reed fibre yet. Everything I've wanted to do 
with suits and paintings, which is all you really use it for, for now. Um, I've built and there's been no lack, and that's all coming from the original Drecos, which are the Drecos that are throwing out the eggs for the plastics. Now we are getting oil, by the way. I am, of course, going to push that. This is the huge water storage. There is sort of two, four, six, eight. There's, there's about 10 or 12 of those. Um, I can't imagine we'll ever get anywhere near filling those. Each one holds 100,000 litres of water. Um, so for now, what we will do is just chuck those in and see how we go. Okay, so we know that the bottom one, the bottom refinery is working okay as long as we don't do steel. But of course we need steel. So I'm going to do another one with the leftover space. And there is no math behind this. I am just kind of making up my own ideas. If any of these ideas work, then I suppose we could post them or people could copy them. Please feel free to copy them or improve them even. But what I'm going to do here is basically fill this column now with these generators so the two right side of it their job is to keep the machine and the room cool from there i am then going to build a crap ton so yeah if you're writing down these instructions that's my answer a crap ton of the generators to cool the fluid because of course it comes out around 85 degrees so the second time you use that water, of course, it will just break everything because it'll be over 100 degrees in that steam. So however many I fit in here is how many I'm going to use. Passing them then with radiant pipes, hoping that the generators then suck the heat out of that liquid enough to get it down to, say, 10, 15, maybe 20 degrees maximum is safe to then just keep reusing it. And if I don't fill it up, it will give it time to, to reset and cool down. If you just put constant water into it, it will always be running. I think what I'll try and do is put, because each time it uses the water, it batches it out. So you get like sections of water for each 100 kilos of steel that you make. So if you set like three or two or three lots of that water in, it can only do that. And then it'd have to recycle the water, cool it down. But it also then gives the machine itself and the room time to cool. So roughly translated, that's how many? That's 15. 15 thermo generators, thermostatic generators, uh, three on each level. The pipe will be insulated so that the heat doesn't go anywhere but where I want it to go, and that is to be released directly onto the generators and see what happens. For now, this just needs to be built. There's no other explanation I can make because it's the first time I've done it. So let me just jump ahead a little bit for the setup. What I am doing, of course, is taking this power. That is a lot of generators. 256 energy each will be created, generated from the heat. This is going to generate two or three times more power than is being used. So this is quote unquote free energy or a bit broken I don't know obviously the laws of physics say that this can't happen because you can't get more energy out than you put in but we are doing um, it is a mod though so it's it, yeah the, the physics guys would be cringing but it's fine it's fine I mean a few, is few issues with power and that is that the coal is not being delivered we have coal, we have the generators, everything's there to be done, but for some reason we don't have enough people or there's another problem, but the coal isn't getting to the generators and of course then we run out of power. There is eight generators there, all running together is more than enough to fill up our stores and allow it to drain with the automation, they don't have to be on all the time. But actually getting a duplicate come over here and prioritize topping these up is not working now i can look at the priorities and change it and use the specific one i'm not sure if it's life support or supplying without looking properly alternatively i'll just micromanage it for now and i'm going to set up some sweepers and automate it 
just pulling the, 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 the coal out of storage and then just dumping it in these where and how I need to. The super storage is still happening, but it's this needs doing now and the and the storage the super storage I really want to um fix the base first and make it a nice symmetrical shape so that I can actually decide where the storage is going to go. There we go though. Just as I'm about to leave, you can see they're starting to get pushed up now with the coal. And at that point, the generators, sorry, the batteries should start to fill up. And we're back in business. So we've then built and the wires also done. You can see they're trying to run, but they're just too cold. That's fine. There is our first line of cooling. So what I need to do now is force some liquid in there, which will be water. I can see a backup on the on there on the left hand side, I can see a backup of my sewage as well. Hopefully I get to that soon before they start peeing all over my floor. Anyway, we need to just get the liquids in here now so that we can see if this is going to actually work. Also, the resources and obviously to make steel you need refined iron, refined carbon and lime. Just making sure this bottom one is working as expected. It did pack up. I'm not sure why. Remember as well to put in the the, the, the the bridges to point it in a direction. Otherwise it will be stagnant. You need at least one bridge to give it a direction to flow. And then you can just use the same liquid over and over and over again. As long as it doesn't burst out in steam. And then, you, and then it's not wasted because you can technically pick it up and put it back. But yeah, it's messy. So up top here, you can see we now have that liquid. It's gone into the machine, and the machine says that it has enough now to action. As it stands, the refinery, when it's full of water, has enough water to do two casts, it seems, or processors. But in order for us to get it working, you need to put the bridge in. Because at the minute, it won't come out, the, the exit, because it doesn't know where to go. So that's why you need to put a bridge in, it gives it a direction, and then the whole system should kick in. And there we go. So now that has been selected by the machine, you can see it wobbling about, and that is making steel. That is the only thing this machine is making. Every other material, the wolfenite, the copper, gold, iron, etc. are all being made down the bottom. Now that you can see... 85 degrees, 85 and a half degrees water coming out. If we go onto the heat map now, you will see there it goes. So it's now forcing its way out. The generators, of course, are immediately grabbing that. Now I forgot on the left hand side, you can see I didn't put a wall in, so there is heat escaping into that corridor, and I really don't want that. I really want to keep it in with the generators so they'll eventually eat it. And again, remember, this is um, free energy now. Second batch there as well as you can see. So there's only two batches worth of water in. So that's why the refinery isn't running. The first batch is about to come back. It's a lot of heat though. A lot of heat. I'm not convinced that that's working as I intended. We need to block this off. It has to be blocked off. So that the heat can't escape and it stays in the area where we need it. And maybe we need some temp shift plates to get that heat pulled out of the water quicker. It needs to be ripped out so that the water can get cooled before it goes back or you will get broken pipes. Okay, so I've gone for a full redesign. This way I'm doubling up so that it lasts. It, every, the liquid stays twice as long with each generator and this should work. We are way over time though, so you're going to have to wait until the next episode to see how well this works. Spoiler, it, it does. Um, so subscribe to come back and see more and we'll show you what these machines can actually do for your steel production thank you very much for watching if you like the video please give a like any comments are welcome as always join us on discord subscribe for more take care goodbye